Well, good morning. We're back at Knutes and Cove Marina. I'm Matt Burbank. I own Knutes and Cove, uh, but we we go out and video all of Southeast Alaska. But since it's a cold, wet kind of winter day out, uh, I thought we'd come in. We've invited some guests to come in later in the show to explain a little bit about tying leaders and and what what they're going to use them for and all the dynamics of that. I just wanted to show you some products we use and why we have leaders. Uh, a lot of you may not know what the setup's for for salmon. Um, and salmon is specifically what we're talking about today. We do, we could tie uh, halibut leaders. Uh, there's all different types and sizes of halibut gear. But today it's specifically salmon. It saves you a little cost. If you tie your own, you can, you can purchase them prepackaged from a couple of different companies. Gumakatsu, great, great uh, gear. Their hooks are sharp as can be. And you can, you can fish these multiple days, which is what I like, um, as long as you keep them sharp, that's the key. If they start curling or getting dull because you're catching too many salmon, uh, it's time to sharpen them. You can resharpen them all you want or uh, just swap them out for another leader. So we also have some eagle claws uh, in the shop there. They're great too. Uh, Gomakatsu is a little bit more my speed and what I like to use. But leader specifically is what we're talking about. And I set up a little, little uh, show and tell here just with a purple flasher for all you Viking fans out there. Um, the reason we have leaders, one of the primary reasons we put leaders on is to keep your line from tangling. So if we were gonna run a direct line all the way from the reel to the hook, throw a live bait or throw a hoochie on, it's gonna spin and spin and spin until there's knots and kinks and whatever you have on your line and you don't want that because then it's gonna force that bait to spin unnaturally. So by tying a leader, putting a couple of swivels between your reel the hooks and the bait, you're going you're gonna to be able to present that a little bit more naturally, no matter if you're using a hoochie or live bait. Um, so today, we're going to talk about just tying leaders. So we on this one here, we have a mooching rig. It's two hooks at the end of your line. So there are two different uh, styles of mooching rigs we carry in the store. And... and our guest is going to show you actually how to tie both of these today. But this one is a slip tie, and, and meaning your top hook, you can position anywhere on the line that you want. So it's, it's tied on with a separate piece of leader, and you're able to, I'm going to do this without poking myself, you're able to actually slip that and move it on the line. So I find that very helpful when I'm using hoochies. So... A lot, of, a lot of our guests aren't going to give you their secrets, but I'll teach you everything I like to do. Uh, these hoochies don't have to stay this length. You, once you put a hoochie on your line, you can actually cut some of that skirt off and slip your hook down so it, it fishes a lot shorter. What does that do? Well, it creates a quicker action in the water. So you can bind that with a shorter leader and that's really gonna get some action behind your flasher. If you leave it long, uh, I like to run 32 inches on my leader. If you leave it long and leave a, a long skirt on it, you can move your hook back up and that'll actually slow that action down. So behind your flasher, it's not spinning or revolving so quickly. Um, so that's interesting, it's something to play with. So you got the length of your leader, the distance between the hooks, the size of your bait. If you're if you're using blue herring, if you're using green herring, red anchovies, or even just a sliver behind a, a hoochie, um, it all is going to react differently, of course. So 
those are some adjustments. So primarily we're gonna run leaders so you can present your bait or hoochie uh, more naturally. You know, the speed matters, like I said, so it, it's, it's kind of a game out there. And, and our guest today, I'm withholding his name until he, until he shows up, but uh, they've been fishing for 50 years together. So he knows what length, what speed, what presentation he likes and it's done well for him over the years. So it'll be interesting to hear how he prepares his own gear. Uh, this time of year when it's raining out, this is what we do up here. Above your leader, uh, we carry all these all these products and more in, in the store there at Knutson Cove. There's all styles of flashers, you know, 360 styles where you're gonna get the, the full loop and you can adjust that on a lot of these. These short bus flashers are a new item this year and they actually have directional fins on them so you can you can make an adjustment on your flasher which is really nice but we also carry flashers with blinking lights and scent compartments you can you can add in there and of course we've got a lot of dodgers down there and the dodgers aren't going to do the 360 primarily they're going to be more of a wobbler uh, create kind of a swimming action back and forth so that's what's going to go above your leader uh, we troll a lot up here and putting these on a downrigger with a flasher, a dodger, uh, something above your leader is, is key. So just wanted to show you a few things we carry in the store. This is Skip and Louise Pattison, our guests for the day that I've been bragging about. Uh, <laughs> they're going to give us a few of the dates, but uh, one of the main ones is they've been fishing together for 50 years out of Knutson Cove. And if that's not impressive enough, <laughs> they've been married for 46 on top of that. <laughs> so uh, fishermen can be picky, and I'm sure there's been some times where Skip's been wrong on the boat. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that they're here and they're going to share a couple of uh, tips and tricks of tying their own leaders up here and, and using them in the water. So with that, I'm going to give it to Skip and Louise and uh, we'll get going. All right. Well, we're going to start off today, this morning, with a solid tie leader and probably a slip tie leader. I'll show you well, how we do it and we'll be using 40 pound test Maxima line. The ultra green, uh, it's a good strong line and the, the color of the line works real well in the water color we have here. So what you do is you get a good long piece of line because you always want to make your leaders longer than uh, what you anticipate using because you can always cut them down to size but you'll take your first hook and before I do that if you look at your hook in the eye of the hook it's bent right there the hook is made out of a piece of wire and they cut the wire just snip it off and bend it and where they snip it off it's really sharp and uh, if you don't tie your leader right, your line can get down there and cut it off. So we have to tie a leader to prevent that from happening. So you go through the eye, come back, go through one more time. Hang on to the tail. You've got a loop. You pull that loop and then you roll it down into that crack pull it tight. Then put seven wraps onto the shank where that line is. Now you have to hold that line from unraveling. Whoops. Take the end of this line, come back up through the eye. 
lay that line on the shank. Wrap seven more times. Okay, after you do that, pull all your slack up through. Pull it tight, and that's your bottom hook. Trim that off. So this line here, when a fish is on, that fish can bend this, make this line go all different directions. But it won't allow it to go in the crack now. If it goes into the crack, if the crack isn't filled, that line will cut right off. And you should never break a leader on a fish. Now, this, this is the second hook. Go through the back of the hook. Pull it down where you want it. About so far apart. Come back up through. You're creating that little loop in there again. Okay, you tighten the loop up, you roll it down into that crack. Pull the line tight. Then you wrap seven more times. And if you notice, I've got two wraps in there where that crack is. Get your seven wraps. Bring it back through the eye of the hook, just a little ways. Put that line on the shank. Wrap it seven more times. Pull your slack up through. Pull it tight. You can see the eye is full. There's no way that one will get cut off. Or that one. And that's usually what happens with a, a leader where the cracks aren't full. And that's how you do a solid tie. So you want to wind your leader up. show you how to do a slip leader. A lot of guys like using a slip leader for whole herring. And you start off pretty much the same way. Go through the hook, come back. This is the bottom hook, so it's pretty standard. Created your loop, roll it into the hook the crack seven times. Get the end of the line, come back up through. Put that one on the shank seven more times. After you do that, pull your slack up. Make sure this is all free. Pull it tight. Trim the tail off. Now for the second hook, the slip, a little different. You need another piece of line. Not so long. Okay, here's the slider hook. We'll go through the front, come back, go through the front again. Made our little loop. 
roll it down into the crack, pull the line tight, wrap seven times. Take the end of the line and run it back through about so far and then hang on to that on the shank, the line, like so. We'll take the end of this line, the one with the first hook we tied, come up through the back. It's a little harder because you got more line in there. And then we'll put that one on the shank also. So there we go. We got two lines going through the eye, two on the shank, and then we're going to wrap them seven times. Okay, then we'll pull it down the, kind of where we want it, down the other line here, up to that hook. Okay, after we get it down there, we'll pull that line tight. There it goes. So we put our hook kind of where we want it, snug up this line that uh, is on the sliding hook, and we'll trim that off to where you have a little bit sticking up. And then we'll trim the tail of it off. And you leave that little bit there in case you want to tighten it up more. But now, we filled the crack in this hook too. And it's tied to the main line, and it will slide. And it will slide without chafing your line, because it's not down in that crack. Okay. So if you get a fish bite it, it won't cut it off. And then you put it wherever you want it. So, if you're rigging a whole herring, this would be up toward the head. This would be down toward the tail. You can adjust your hooks to get the bend you want. And that's how that's done. Cut, cut them to any length you want, depending on if you're dragging them behind a flasher, a dodger. But if you're using bait, whole herring, cut plug, flay, they have their own action. So you don't want a short leader, say, behind a dodger or a flasher or uh, because then you're giving it double action and your bait probably won't hold up very long. So when you're running an action lure behind a flasher, always go with a longer leader. Uh, some guys don't. Some guys drag like a spoon with a short leader and the fish have a little hard time catching it. Sometimes they don't get hooked. But uh, anyway, that's uh, two bait rigs right there. You can also use these rigs on a flay. And then this rig here, I, I won't, I can show you what they look like, but uh, tying it is it's not that big a deal. And this would be for a hoochie. And what we have here is a 5 aught commercial hook with a aught one uh, swivel and then we have 60 you can use 60 to 80 pound test line and the reason why you use a heavy line not just because it's stronger but when you're when you have you're going to hook this up to a flasher. <laughs> so when you're dragging a flasher through the water, your flasher is going to go like this. It's going to rotate, and the back end is going to swing. So you want the action from that flasher when it's rotating to transfer down the line. To your hoochie. Now, 
the stiffer line will transfer that action. Uh, a lighter line won't give give you the the right action. Uh, it just won't transfer the motion of the flasher. So you want to use a heavy line. And then as you're as you're fishing, you have to adjust this leader, uh, especially for king salmon, silvers, chums. Pinks don't really matter. Uh, but the longer your leader behind the flasher, as it rotates, it spins, your hoochie is going to do this. It's going to rotate because the back of the flasher is causing it to rotate as it goes through the water. So the longer the leader, the tighter the rotation. The shorter the leader, the bigger the rotation. So if you're fishing for king salmon, you want a tight rotation back here as it goes. So you want a longer leader. Cohos, you want to shorten up. They're a faster fish, you know, say anywhere from 26 to 32 inches. Kings, uh, 32, 36 commercial guy he's gonna he's gonna troll 42 so that gives him a tight rotation back there and a lot depends on your speed so you always want to plop it in the water look at it uh, see how tight your rotation is if it's too big of a rotation or not enough and then you want to cut your leader shorten it up and uh, that's how you would you would tune it to catch fish and you can also drag a spoon behind that but this leader here you would put a puck on there run it down over the swivel and then run your hoochie down the line over the puck and on when you got your length figured out put a corkscrew swivel on there cut it to cut it uh, to the exact length you want so if you wanted 30 inch leader cut it 30 inches by the time you tie your knot onto your corkscrew, it'll be 30 inches. Before you're done, I'm going to share, I'll, I'll share Skip's secret. <laughs> He's like, what's secret? You might want to turn them off. All right, well, no, it's your, oh. share your secrets. Oh, okay. Well, everybody always wants to know Skip's secret. He's caught many fish over the years, many big fish. And so I'm going to share his secrets. <laughs> Probably thinking, what is she going to say? But he has grown up fishing here and spent many 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 hours out on the water probably the number one secret for skip and i is that for him he's been gifted to catch fish but our number one is we pray every day before we leave the dock and it doesn't matter what's going on we just always got to remember to pray before we leave and so if other people want to catch fish just get right with god and start praying that's his secret so he was probably nervous thinking i was going <laughs> to tell something of others <laughs> You got nothing to say to that. <laughs> no. I was going to say whether we get home, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's all it's all fun and games. Yeah. <laughs> so a couple of questions I got for you, and it's it's the questions that everybody asks you: <coughs> Who between you two has caught the bigger fish in all these years? <laughs> he has. What was it? Fifty-four, twelve. 54-12. King, King Sam. Sam. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And did, was that a derby winner? Yeah. So for, <clears throat> for those that don't know, Catch a Can used to put on a, a King Salmon Derby every year. Uh, we would have thousands of people enter. And uh, how many times have you or your boat captured the number one fish? Well, out of all the derbies that they've had over the years, we've won nine derbies. Wow. What about netting? Who's netted the bigger bigger fish? And for, I'll fill you in, Louise runs the deck on their boat, and mm -hmm. she nets a lot of fish, probably more than I do every year, <laughs> for sure. But All but the big ones. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I won't let the big ones go off. Okay. I start shaking. Yeah. Right. Sometimes she has to net one of them. I have to net his, but... Yeah, it's been fun to, to have them part of 
my uh, professional career, so mm -hmm. thankful for him. But uh, um, if if you like today's episode, uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel and hit like. And um, if you want to book with Skip and Louise, you just get a hold of the marina, and we can get you set up directly. Uh, other than that, I really appreciate you guys coming out and educating me. Every time Skip talks, I get educated if I like it or not. So. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been great. So thank you. Thank you. Bet. you.